Hey y'all, welcome to Sweet Tan Butterflies. Today we are participating in the Just Our Imagination Challenge and we are required to use three different challenge items. Um, we've got, pardon me, we had to use flip-flops, Jengas, and a placemat. I have so much fun doing these challenges because it makes me think outside the box. So I will leave the information um, for, well, we'll get into the information for this um, challenge here in a few minutes. Um, all of the links will be in the description box so that you can follow the playlist. Um, I am also, I also wanted to give a shout out to Cindy with Z9 Designs. Um, in one of the other collaborations that we, uh, that both of us were a part of, she was doing a giveaway. And she, uh, my name was one drawn and I won. And this is what, I don't know if you can see it very well, but I'll take a picture of it too. It's a really pretty necklace that she made. Got a lot of little glittery pieces in there. So, and I'll also put a picture in the description box or not in the, I'll add a picture um, in the video as well of it. But I just wanted to give her a shout out. Um, she's a very talented creator and um i'll leave a link to her description or to her channel in my description box as well i'm struggling today y'all can you tell uh so um go check out her channel and subscribe and you know if you like what you see she's um very talented very creative so and i will also um, I'm at 493 subscribers, so, um, I am going to do a small giveaway at the 500 mark and let me see, do I have, yeah, I do. So, oops. So I will be giving away a cute little, uh, set here give me a minute let me get it open but see it comes in a little pouch like this and it is oops a little notebook that you can take notes in oops the glare there we go and a matching little pen is that not just the cutest thing um, I have, I carry one of these around in my purse with me. Um, it's great for being able to jot down little notes and whatnot. And they're just kind of cute and fun, but it comes in this little bag here. So when I hit 500 subscribers, I will be doing a drawing for that. So I appreciate you guys stopping by let's get on with crafting let's see what i make with these challenging items shall we all right y'all it's time to see what i do with these interesting items this is uh part of the july's just our imagination uh collaboration our host Hosts are Kathy Joe with Kathy Joe's DIYs, Brenda with Rustic and Lace, and Craft Crumbs. So I will leave the description of uh, each of their uh, links and the link to the playlist in the description box below. Please go check out um, the playlist and everybody else. Um, we all get very creative with some of these challenging items that they come up with for us to work with. So here I am, this is, you know, using the flip-flops element uh, that we're required to use. And these were just 
too big for what I, the idea I had come up with. So I traced, um, or I didn't trace, I just kind of drew the basic outline of a flip-flop smaller on those and then cut them out as you see here. And then I took uh, some of this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. It's got like the burlap and the um, and twine on it, the, the white twine with a little pattern. And I just go around and outline both of those mini flip flops with that. Because I don't know if y'all have ever tried cutting a flip flop, but it doesn't, it, yeah, <laughs> they were not, they weren't perfect. But once I put this on here, it kind of covered it up and made them look really cute. So there's always a way around it when, when you can't get a good clean cut or a good clean shape in there. Um, so I just wrapped this around both of them and I didn't make you watch me do the second one. I just showed you how I did the first one. Let's see. And then I took some jute twine, took three pieces of it. I cut them pretty long because I had planned on trying to use the one whole thing to do both the flip flops. And you'll see here that I uh, bunch them up at the top and take some painter's tape and just tape it down so that I can braid it. So I just did, went through and braided the whole thing. <clears throat> And you could see from the, the first clip there that I've got like a long um, tag sign that I'm working with. And I painted it, uh, I painted it with the, the white and then um, decoupaged on it. Um, I don't think I have all of the footage of that because I had to step away and go somewhere else where I didn't have my camera. Um, but what I did with that was I painted it white, then I coated it with Mod Podge, and I took my printout um, after the Mod Podge dried, and I used the iron-on method and placed that down on there, which you'll see here in a few minutes, um, the printout and whatnot that I put on there. So here I'm just making the strap of the sandal. Um, I just folded the the braid, glued it down, folded like that, and then um, glued it at the back sides there. And I'm sure you guys might be wondering about my interesting coffee cup. Um, my first husband um, got into leather working there for a while and he made me a um, coffee cup he had taken and, and used the, the leather made the and wrapped it around a mason jar with a handle um, he put a butterfly on it and put my name on it um, we lost him a few years ago and um, that is the coffee cup that I, I use um, you, you wouldn't know that at the time that he passed away, we had been divorced for probably 20 years. We just, in our efforts to effectively co-parent our child, um, you know, we took the stance that once our divorce was final, our problems were over and focused on co-parenting. So we ended up becoming best friends. Um, through the years uh, with co-parenting and, and whatnot. So, um, but yeah, he, he made me that coffee cup and um, it's just a really cute, unique coffee cup. So I really loved it and I use it every day. I do have, um, I think I have pictures of it on my, on our Facebook page um, somewhere, <laughs> but anyway, so as you can see here, I had taken and decoupaged my, um, 
my printout on the, the tag sign there. And I don't know why when I was painting it, I had left the string in there and was trying to paint around the string and then it dawned on me that, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to put your paper down on here so I took the string off but as you can see there I've got um, a printout of a beachy scene and I decided to use the footprints in the sand um, poem and that's what's at the top of it I just um, I struggled. I struggled hard with the, the flip-flop thing and then all of a sudden the, I was, I don't know what I was looking at or watching and it just hit me. I was like, oh, okay, I know what I'm going to do. Footprints in the sand, little tiny flip-flops. Hey, that works. So here I'm taking some air dry clay and putting it in this mold, uh, seashell mold. And um, <clears throat> now it's probably better to let it dry a little bit before you try to pop it out because this is like my third attempt at popping it out of there. Um, if you push from the back side, the clay takes in the imprint of your finger, you know, trying to push from the other side. So I was trying to jiggle it loose and pry it out without leaving finger prints in the, the top so it would keep, its, um, keep the, form, the shape there. So, um, if you're going to use air dry clay, I suggest maybe doing a little bit ahead of the uh, ahead of time and laying it dry a little bit before you pop it out of there. It was my first time using the air dry clay in a mold, so you know, live and learn, which I did. So I've got these two um, really pretty color shift paints. Um, what? are they? Let me see. One of them is it's a folk art color shift um, and it's plum flash and oops, that's not it. Uh, not it. And uh, violet flash. So you can get these at you can get these at any of the craft stores, I think. I don't recall which craft store Dee bought these at. Um, she gets a little bit nonsensical with uh, when she goes into a craft store or a Dollar Tree or anywhere that anything could be used as a craft supply. So, <clears throat> and here I'm just uh, placing the little flip-flops on there and the little seashells on there. I'm not sure that I like the seashells, but they're there now, so I'll have to get used to them. <laughs> so I took and made a messy bow for the top. And as you can see here, I cut a bunch of, and I didn't measure, I just cut a strip and then followed suit with the, the length um, and then dovetailed each of the, the thicker wired ribbons. And then I just crisscrossed. Um, I wasn't trying to follow any particular pattern, but I was also trying not to have <clears throat> two of the same color on top of each other. You know, I was trying to make sure that I switched it up as I was doing the crisscrosses. I just took another piece of that thin ribbon there and used it to tie it off. And here I'm sitting here trying to get it tied off and um, scrunching it down and whatnot. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute. You missed one <laughs> when you picked it up. So I had to add it and tie it up again. <coughs> <clears throat> Don't mind me, y'all. <laughs> So I just uh, fluffed it out and I put the hanger back in the top of the, the sign and then I glued the uh, messy bow to the top. And there you have it. And unfortunately, um, it's not the best uh, 
or trying to get a full shot of it, but you'll see uh, pictures in the final reveal. Now we are on to DIY number two, maybe. Yep, DIY number two, there we go. And this one is using the placemats. Um, I had bought these a while ago, probably a couple years ago with the intent to do this. And this isn't an original idea. Um, I've seen many creators use placemats to make little pillows and um, I had bought these placemats, like I said, a couple years ago for that purpose. And the fact that we had to use placemats, I was like, okay, you know, I bought these a couple years ago to do and never did. So let's do it. <laughs> so I just very carefully took along, um, along the edge there, hot glue, um, and just did a little, little strip at a time so that I can make sure that I had the edges lined up just right and then made sure to press down on them and I did that all the way around except for one end so that I could stuff it and here I am I just I don't buy the polyfill y'all I go to Dollar General or you know wherever I can get a cheap pillow and I just use I use that because I really I don't do enough crafts that I use the stuffing that much um, you know, I can buy a, a pillow for, I don't know, they're pro they've probably gone up since I bought that one. I think I paid $2 for that one, but they're probably about $5 now. If that tells you how long it takes me to go through one pillow's worth of the stuffing, right? So, anyway, um, so I, I just went through and made sure I got it good and, and um, sealed up and lined up just right. I didn't want my edges to be all funky looking. So that's why I take just a little little bit at a time and go along there. And then I just make sure I rub it real good to, to make sure that that glue all sinks in there and, and adheres properly. Now, <clears throat> I don't sew. So using the hot glue is, is the best option for me. Um, if you sew, feel free to sew um, if you want to recreate it. Now we're on to number DIY number three. This one is using the Jenga blocks. So I used, um, heck I can't tell you how many are there. I'd have to math in my head. Oh God. Um, I took and did uh, sets of three and glued them together as you can see here and it looks like so I made 16 sets I think of three anyway and I yeah I didn't make you watch me glue all of these together um, that's just ridiculous so after I got all the, the uh, sets of three glued together, I took and did the, um, glued them together like this, alternating the direction that the, the blocks are going, <clears throat> just to give it a little more interest. So I did um, four strips of four, I believe. I think I did four strips of four to form a block, you know, like a, a block. Um, and I just glued them using uh, wood glue. I prefer using wood glue on raw wood, um, especially with the Jenga blocks when I'm putting them together. Um, you get a flush or, you know, it's, it's more flush and the wood glue tends to, um, it forms a unique bond with raw wood. So more sturdy. Now I took these little um, these little uh, things I got from Dollar General. They've got like the chicken wire and the um, animals on it. Now this idea here I I believe was a Kathy Joe idea. Um, 
I will leave the link to her video in the description box below. Um, I was binge watching a bunch of Kathy Joe because, well, she's hilarious. Um, and happened to run across this. I was like, oh, that's so cool. So I recreated it. Thanks, Kathy Joe, for the inspiration. But um, now I had two of these things already. And then when I got inspired to do this, I went and bought two more. I did not realize when I was purchasing that they had two different types. Um, one of them has a black, you know, they, I have two that have a black frame with a white animal on it and two that have a brown frame with a black animal on it. I was like, oh Lord. So I bought the last two that the, the Dollar General had. Um, in my area and I couldn't find any others at the other Dollar Generals. So I went with it. Um, but unfortunately I still kind of goofed up in the way I, I had intended to do it a certain way where it was black, brown, black, brown. Um, and I let the two cows dictate what I did. And so I have, yeah, it, it's kind of, uh, I didn't alternate the, the black and brown frames. Um, I put the cows opposite each other and it just, it, yeah, it didn't, it's okay. It's cute. I like it. I'm not worried about it. I'll let it go. You know, I'll live with it there. So, um, I took, once I got them glued at the bottom, as you can see, I tacked the corners up at the top to make sure that it held together. And then I also put a Jenga block in the corners to, um, you know, give it a little more stability. And somehow I lost the footage of me going in with the antique wax and hitting all of those, um, all of the Jenga blocks and whatnot with the antique wax. But that's what I did. I went in and, and um, stained all of those with antique wax. <clears throat> so anyway y'all i appreciate you coming uh stopping by and watching the video please check out the playlist um please like subscribe comment share on everybody's videos um i'm trying to get up to a thousand subscribers when i get a thousand subscribers I will be doing a, a big giveaway sharing some of these craft supplies that I got in this free, um, free haul. So when I get to a thousand, we'll do that giveaway. I've got a smaller giveaway. Um, once I hit 500, I'm at 493. So hopefully by the end of this, uh, run of videos, I will hit that 500 mark and I'll do that giveaway as well. And I showed you what I was giving away for that one um, at the beginning of the video. But see, here's my little uh, crate box here. So I appreciate and love all of you guys, um, all of you that continue to support me. Oh, and also, here's the necklace that Z9 Designs made and sent to me. Um, thanks so much for watching, y'all. Have a great day.